Hey guys, before you jump in this video, I want to give you a quick reminder. We are working from our home studios, okay? We are not mix engineers getting in a bunch of files that we can't change after the fact. So before you go too crazy down the rabbit hole with like, oh my gosh, I can't get these edits right. Let's kind of just use our common sense of like, well, would it be quicker to just play this part again? That's one of the beauties of being like a self-produced, self-engineered at-home producer. You know, oftentimes I don't go into the depths of like, let's say that I've got a bad vocal take. You know, hopefully if I've taken a take and I've decided to move on to editing, I've got the best performance possible. But if for some reason there's something in there that's just wonky, it's probably going to make more sense to cut it again than it is to actually to try and go in and fix it. Now, on the other hand, if someone hired you to mix something or edit something and that was your job, well then yeah, you would need to know like in depth, you know, you'd need to be able to go as deep as possible with your editing skills. So what I'm going to teach you in this video is going to show you pretty in depth how to edit, but just keep in mind that it might not be the most efficient thing to do when you're working on a track for yourself. Okay, hope you have fun. Hey, so we're going to take a deeper dive into recording and editing our acoustic guitars, okay? So I want you to just kind of follow along with what I'm doing. Okay, so notice that I've got the guitar, the acoustic guitar is kind of going to be pointing in between the, the hole here in the body and the 12th fret. And the closer I get to the neck, it's going to be thinner. The closer I get to the hole here, it's going to be bassier. Thinner. Right? So you're going to want to find that sweet spot. Now remember, this isn't a guitar vocal. This is a full track that we're working on. So I don't need all that bass. I'll end up EQing a lot of it out anyway. So just keep that in mind. Okay, and then one thing you always want to make sure you do is you always want to tune right before you play. I mean, even if you do it a few minutes before and you don't tune, you can waste an entire take. So I'm just double checking. And then also guys, if you are playing with a capo, tune with the capo on. <laughs> a lot of people don't think to do that. They tune and then they throw their capo on, uh, capo on and it throws the whole thing off. So anyway, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and record the course. Okay, so I did that all in one pass. Um, it felt pretty good. I'm pretty familiar with the song, so I feel like the performance overall was tight. Probably wasn't perfect, but that's okay because we're gonna jump in and edit audio. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure that this um, this uh, track here is highlighted, and then we're gonna click here, or actually, let's double click on it and get in here so we can really see. And then we're gonna click this for our flex. Okay, and what you want to do is go to polyphonic because poly is great for guitars. Poly is when more than one is playing. Um, so you'll see that it analyzes it and it kind of, you know, you see these little markers here. What it's looking for is transients and that's good because we want to put those transients where they belong on the grid, right? So in this case, we're going to go up here, right up here on the left and go to quantize and you'll want to select what you want to quantize to. You can quantize to quarter notes, eighth notes, uh, sixteenth notes, and so on and so forth. In this case, the song is pretty straightforward. I would start with um, 16th, just note to you guys. Eighth notes and sixteenth notes are going to work a good majority of the time. If your song is swung or if it's really like um, got a lot of subdivisions going on in it, um, as far as the part that's playing, you might want to go a little bit higher, but let's start with sixteenth notes and see what happens. So automatically, just by clicking that, you see that it has analyzed and snapped everything into the grid, right? So the white part right here is showing you what has been compressed or condensed, you know, something that was a little too long, it took it and it went Neh. And then the gray part is the part that was expanded to fit, right? So 
that's you don't really need to know that but I'm just geeking out and telling you so let's have a listen and I'm gonna put the click on to just so we can see how it locks in <laughs> By the way, the blue part means nothing changed. That is the original audio. So it pretty much grabbed most of the playing and just really tucked it in there. And uh, it either compressed it or it expanded it. So uh, let's keep listening. I'm gonna take the click off. Ah, did you hear that right there? That kind of feels a little funky to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover above this marker and just exit that. Hover above this and just exit that. And let's listen again. So what that does is that takes it back to where it was. When you hit those X's, it's getting rid of the editing that Logic has done, right? So I'm going to get in there and manually just grab it and slide it to where I want it. Let's listen again. That feels better to me. Let's listen with the click. See, so what I've done is I've gone in here with my cursor and I can move this as well. And when you see the spike of the audio where it is the, the tallest, that's the transient, right? You can see where those transient spikes are and that's what you're trying to line up to the grid. Also, if you go up here, you can change your grid view. So if you want to get, if you want it to break it down e even more, like you do that, and it's going to show you, see how these little grid divisions, they just got smaller, right? So I'm going to go back down to 16th. Ah, there we go. So it's pretty, pretty simple. If you play your part tightly, it's not going to need a whole lot of love. And sometimes you're not going to want to quantize everything straight to the grid because it's going to make it feel a little stiff. In this case, for me, this is totally fine. But something that has a lot of swing or a lot of emotion, you might not want to do that. You might want to just go in there and flex, analyze it. But then rather than quantize by going up here, you would leave that alone, come in here manually, and then grab and go ahead and move your transients where you need them. Keep in mind, over editing in audio will result in artifacting just like it does in vocals. So if you're tuning vocals and you flatten something out too much or make something too perfect, it sounds kind of robotic. The same thing happens with audio. Okay, so another thing I wanna talk about that's gonna make your editing life so much easier is um, is our snap mode. So right up here, you can see I was on, I'm on beat now, but I was on smart. And so smart mode is kinda of gonna let you do whatever you want. So I'll, I'll zoom in to kinda of show you what I mean about that. So um, these are all bars, right? You can see that those are bars. So let's see, I'm in smart. It's going to see that I want to be on the bar. It'll put me there, but if I wanna be slightly off, it'll let me kind of, do whatever I want, right? It's not going to give me even cuts because it's giving me complete full range, right? I'm going to undo out of that and then I'm going to move on to another mode. I'm going to go to bar. So now I have to cut on the bar. So if I'm off, it's still going to go to the bar, even if I'm not being precise with my cutting. Now, sometimes you want to cut and you need something before the bar. It might be in between, right? Well, you can also move to beats and that'll let you get right on the beat. Now, this is great. Let's say you wanted to do on the beat, every beat, and you just want to be quick, you know, like you can totally do that and it's going to give you even cuts. Let's look at what divisions does. I think division will subdivide even more than that. So we can really get in there like, but it's going to still get you on the subdivision, right? It won't let you go in between, but let's go back to that smart mode. That smart mode will let me get even deeper into there, right? So it's really just about like how free you want to be um, and putting the restrictions on yourself by putting yourself in division bar or smart can just help to like make things faster and more efficient because sometimes when you're in smart mode, you might think you're, you know, hitting on the beat or, you know, snipping on, on the division and then your eyes are just kind of fooling you, right? So um, just make sure that you're very mindful. And then all of this is 
as the grid relates to what you have set here. By the way, if for some reason your uh, your panel doesn't look like this, just go ahead here and click custom. You can also do that by right clicking here and going to customize and then making sure that this is in custom. Okay, so then this is going to give you 16th notes and so on and so forth. So you can really get in there and, and, and do some like, you know, really in-depth editing. Um, in the case of this guitar, though, I think simply, and I'm just going to control Z out of all those little snips I just made. Another way to do that is to highlight and go T G, which glues back together or J will do the same thing. So, but yeah, in the case of this guitar, simply putting it into flex mode and then using that quantize, uh, really just kind of got the performance to where I needed it to be. So just keep in mind, you know, if you don't want it to be super tight, you can do it manually. You can do in flex mode and then go in and make adjustments because sometimes it's not gonna be 100% right, but it'll get you like 60, 70, 80% there. And then you go in and do the rest manually and make sure that your snap is set to where you want it. I keep mine on smart a lot, but I've been told that's kind of a dangerous thing. I like to live on the wild side. What can I say? Um, yeah, I think that does it for this one. See you soon. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a boss.